Howdy folks, Sathias here, and welcome back to Tyranny. Now, there's no mistaking Tyranny for something else when going through recording, because it gets you right in the mood with every time you open up the game with its music. And it is freaking incredible. Oh, no. Apparently we still need to talk to Barrack, so let's kind of get that over with before we head out and do anything else. Fate Binder, if you have a moment. Barrack stands at attention, his rigid bearing making of him an unmoving statue. I know that the two of us have clashed on several subjects since the Iron Marshal assigned me to your protection. I hope these disagreements do not weigh too heavily against the request I'm about to make of you. Um, uh, yes, what do you want? I had hoped perhaps the adjudicator would hear my case. What are you talking about? I have been encased in this. He wraps a gauntlet against his shards of corroded iron and bronze that sweep across his chest. Shell, since Kairos' Edict of Storms, made a grave of old stalwart. It occurred in service to the Overlord. I would like to, I would ask the Overlord free me of its burden. Um... He's not gonna, I'm not going to say happily make your case. But Tuna can't order Kairos to take your armor off. I have several daydreams that would take issue with your statement. Oh, that's Eb. I wasn't going to ask for the Overlord to do it personally. His metal plates grind together as he shifts. The Forge-bound guild swore its services to the Adjudicator. If any hope in my f of my freedom from this carapace exists, it lies with them. Uh, aren't you useful in your armor? Perhaps, but there are other armors. Air passes from his helmet, possibly the result of a sigh. Any respectable commander would extol to you the virtues of high morale. I confess that each day I remain confined to this monstrosity mind wanes. So... It gives us, the game gives us two options for this, so we happily make your case, or we don't have time for this. Um, I'd say we'll make his case, as opposed to, um, you know, you have those <laughs> things, uh, those things that you take that have, like, uh, you know, most like me, not like me at all, those scales, we're more towards we'll make his case then we don't have time for it. Because we're going to be going over there anyway, so we might as well make use of it. Thank you, Fate Binder. This salute rings like a poorly cast bell. So maybe we can say, we can, you could say it sarcastically, and he just takes it at face value. Who knows? I eagerly await the Archon's judgment. All right, so that's it. So we're taking Ebb. We got like two mages with us. Two mages, the tank, and whatever the hell Zithios is. Will do. Holy crap, so we got Sinjin Hall. Initial Citadel. It's got a lot of different places to go to now. Holy crap. We gotta go to Sunset Spire. And I think that's... No, wait. No, we got the Bastard City, too. So we got two different things we can go to. We get Sunset Spire, which is like what the vision told us to go, where the vision told us to go, or we go report to Tunon. And I think after everything we've done here in Vendrian's Well, that the vision can wait and we need to report in. That's what we're going to do. We're going to report to Tunon's court. So that's going to take two days, two and a half days. So this is, the Bastard City is now his domain. Oh, we get interrupted. All right, cool. An uneventful day on the road is interrupted by a loud cry. An old man, dirt encrusted and wild-eyed, dressed in little more than tattered rags, emerges from the brush, charging feebly towards you with a sword hilt high. For Apex, his sandals catch on a tree root, sending him tumbling into the dirt. His brittle blade strikes the ground first, snapping in two. He clutches his ribs and whispers a low groan. 
laying on the ground for an uncomfortably long time. His moans give way to rhythmic, heavy breathing, and just as you step forward to determine if the old man has fallen asleep, he picks himself up, wagging the useless blade at you. The day is ours, dogs of Kairos. The man continues to ramble, and it soon becomes clear that he believes himself late for the first battle of Apex. He is correct, in a sense. The battle was waged over two years ago. Blissfully unaware of his kinsman's failure, he demands your surrender before generously offering to settle for a mere ransom. Alright, so we got some guy who's had some dealing with some... Trauma, perhaps, <laughs> um, losing his wits to a certain degree, for sure. Definitely, it's, it's a battle that's over two years old now. So we can convince him to wage war against Graven Ash. We could disarm him and spare him. We can convince him we're he's, we're not an enemy and give him some rings, or we could just kill the man. Um. This man, this old man, doesn't know what he's doing or who he's after. And there's no... Again, Zethio skins nothing from just killing the old man. And it doesn't make him feel better. Um, it's just, it's a sad situation that he's found himself come across. And so, we could say that the war's over, and, you know, be a peacemaker at that point. Um, we're not going to tell him to go against Graven Ash, because he's... That's it's sending him to his ultimate doom. Uh, we get disarm and spare his life, and we we'll just probably just take pity on the old man. Is what we'll try and do. Swallowing your pride, you lower your weapons and explain that you're not a threat. He watches you through narrowed eyes, expecting a ruse, and doesn't lower his blade until you fabricate the story that you're part of the crew. Part of a crew of Tearsmen marching to meet Queen Vindry in Atlanta's mustering call. He surveys your clothing for a few moments and, not recognizing the emblems of Tunon's court, finally smiles in relief. You convince him that the Queen's support is significant and suggest that he return home and leave the fighting to the younger reinforcements already en route. He hesitates but nods in agreement. You press some rings into his hands and give him directions to the nearest inn where you may find hot food, drink, and most importantly a warm bath. Okay, so we got some inspire, no reputation change. But, um. I don't know, maybe it doesn't show. We didn't get anything out of the encounter, we just gave stuff away. But yeah, just, uh. The best you can think of that encounter going. Harvest is standard. The opposing side for both conquered and unconquered alike. Yeah, no shit. Alright, it's very empire-like with no security. Those guards could just fall to their deaths at any point in time. But, oh, we've got a lot of fate binders. And we have... Some disfavored and scarlet chorus over there. Um, let's have, a, let's have a talk with this named person. Lady Lucretius. This well-dressed older woman stands apart from the milling crowds of nobles. She stares off into the distance, oblivious to your approach until you're right in front of her. Oh, greetings. She offers a reserved smile. Anda Lucretius, formerly of Thistleholm. You have the look of someone who belongs here. A fate binder, no doubt. She nods. Do you need something from me? Um, what brings a noble like yourself to Tunon's court? A frown cracks her pleasant demeanor. 
Like the rest of the frightened inbreds here, I come to see Tunan and ask him to right a wrong. My manor was destroyed during the conquest. I told the adjudicator my woes, but we didn't exactly see eye to eye. So, what are these, all of these nobles doing? She smirks and shakes her head, trying to look brave, I warrant. But if you crane an ear to any of their conversations, you'll hear a different tale. Three years since Tunon set up shop in the Bastard City, we're still getting used to our new masters and figuring out what we can and can't ask of them. She nods to the assembled nobles. These are smart, ring-plenty folk. The way they approach Tunon, you think they were raised under a tyrant's lash. Some have come to settle a grievance, others to pledge fealty. I've been standing around long enough to know that the adjudicator doesn't care for empty gestures. How is it fair since the conquest? The armies claim the city in a quieter, more organized manner than I might have expected. I can credit them that much, to be sure. Thanks to course infiltrators, most of our officials were put to the sword before we surrendered. The chaos made the takeover easy for Kairos' forces, but controlling the city without any leaders to bend the knee was harder work. We've suffered our share of hardships, but it seems that Kairos wants us alive. That's a more generous outcome than most of us, than some of us were led to believe. And what about yourself? I'm the daughter of a noble house. We were wealthy enough to live in the city, but our means beyond that were limited. My mother dealt in fish, textiles, and bronze. By the time I inherited, the business was taking care of itself. Of course, all of that has changed. This little home is no more, and my name has none of its former weight. Even if we were still in business, Kairos' laws would stifle our trading rights. Perhaps it's better this way. Alright, so... Kairos' law of quota and sharing meticulously regulates tradable goods. Permits are issued by deserving merchants on an annual basis, but their allowances circulate by a design known only to Kairos and Tunan. A former wool peddler may be restricted to selling only copper, and the subsequent year trade fresh vegetables. Interesting. Oh, farewell. Alright, so, oh, hey, Tunan. Did see you there earlier. So probably just look into what's going on here. Alright. Uh, where is our... Land tree, you do not need to be there. Like, if anything, Sithias can be there. Let's go like this. What's that? Alright, they're not gonna start yet? Now there they go. I figured. You call yourselves officers of Kairos' army, but your conduct falls short of my expectations. The court finds your accounts of Vendrian's well lacking, rife with misdirection and fallacy, fouled with baseless accusation. The shadows beneath Tunan's cloak darken and flare around him. Murmurs of unease erupt in the court. Yeah, we'll just listen. We're not going to disrupt this until he makes note of us. Albitronus. Interesting name. Like Albatross, but different. <laughs> Your Honor, I have relayed the events as I experienced them. You can well imagine why my version conflicts with his. She makes a dismissive gesture to the Scarlet Corps representative. On my honor and on that of the great general, I would sooner snap my sword than perjure myself before you, Archon. Blood mulch. Oh, so you impl imply that falsehood comes easier to my lips than yours. You're a fool if you believe the Archon of Justice won't see through your lies because the disfavored think themselves better than an honest gang. Silence. The contradictions in your statements will be examined, and falsities threshed from truths. If we find you have perjured yourselves, Bled and Mark will see to your fate. Bled and Mark is Kairos' knife in the shadows, the unseen drop of poison that enforces the Overlord's will. He reports to Tunan the Adjudicator, serving him in this capacity as the final word to those who hold Kairos' law in contempt. Few know the origins of the Archon of Shadows, or how Kairos maintains a hold on him. Those who angered the Archon never live long to see past sunset. So Blen and Mark is like his right hand man assassin. 
The Archon turns and feels his gaze upon you. Fatebinder, we will start with the matter of the Archons. Graven Ash and the voices of Nerat have declared war upon each other. In addition to violating Kairos's peace, they have thrown the conquest of the Tears into disarray. By all accounts, these hostilities began shortly after your arrival. Tell us what transpired. <sighs> Alright, so we can say the Archons cannot agree on who should lead the siege and descended into accusations of treachery. It seemed a mutual spat. The Archons have been at different, of different minds since the start of this war. Um, so yeah, definitely not lying. That's not going to get us anywhere. Um, and it's a stupid lie. But by accounts, they're saying that they're trying to pin it on we ex exacerbated the situation, which is not what happened. Definitely not. We were trying to get them to freaking cooperate with each other. And so, like, they were of this, they were of different minds since before we got there. So we can say they were of that since the start. Your perspective is appreciated, but the dispositions of the two Archons are already a matter of record. Loyal subjects of Kairos have drawn blood from each other, a cardinal crime. Something happened at Vendrine's Well to trigger this feud. Right, so, yeah, they couldn't agree on who would lead the siege and descended into accusations of treachery. It seemed a mutual spat. The disfavored were more deserving of the honor. Our tactics and training outmatched the Vendrine Guard at every turn. But bolder dash, the disfavored couldn't tip over a straw hut if they had a week to strategize. Our howling mob was better equipped to overwhelm the Vendrian Guard. Our recruits were ready to throw themselves at the enemy. If only Ash and his legion would agree to a plan. The Fate Binder presents testimony. I warn you both against speaking out of turn. Something more than a mere disagreement unraveled this campaign. But I will return to that in time. Mm-hmm. Let us speak of Ascension Hall. From all accounts, it would seem you were instrumental in its capture. Or so the petitioner of the Scarlet Chorus testifies. The disfavored commander has a dimmer view of the matter. Lend me your perspective. Right, so we did join with the Scarlet Chorus. We took the Citadel with an unstoppable advance. I don't know why this is a lie. This is kind of the truth of what happened, right? The Scarlet Chorus did its thing. And then we went into Ascension Hall, and we um, did some work until we got into the big fight in the throne room. And we had some troubles there, and we made it out just barely. I don't th th take that as a lie. We took the Citadel with an unstoppable advance. Hmm, alright, I guess we'll go with one. I think one is, I mean, they're both technically true. I don't know why two's a lie. The edict meant certain doom if the siege failed. So why, when your survival depended on it, did you join your strength to the Scarlet Chorus and not the elite disfavored? So we could say petty squabbles clouded Graven Ash's judgment. He was too mired in assaulting the voices... To conquer the Citadel properly, or the Voice of Nart was willing to win the Citadel at any cost. Ashes values his army more than his duty to Kairos. Um. I'm not gonna talk about between the two of them. We're not gonna freaking. Mm, we're like throwing shit. At Graven Ash, which is deserved, but we're not. I don't want to build up. The voices of Narat either. Out of these two statements, I don't know which one is more true for Sathios. So petty squabbles clouded Graven Ash's judgment. He was too mired in assaulting the voices. To conquer the Citadel, probably. True. They were to be 
squawking and bigger, bickering at each other in their tent. But the Waste of Narat was definitely not willing to win the Citadel. But I think we'll probably go with one. For a long while, the Adjudicator hovers in silence, shadows trailing from below his robes. I will consider this testimony at length. The court thanks you for it. Is there anything you wish to add at this time? I don't think that's it. Your testimony is accepted by the court. The statements of our guests raise questions in my mind. There is much about this campaign that has caused me to wonder. A shipment of iron weapons was short on arrival. Where coveted iron is concerned, I don't believe it to be a clerical error. One of my agents recovered this seal in Echo Call. It belongs to a merchant collective. Lethian's Crossing is teeming with their kind. If you would root out treachery, I would advise starting there. Alright, is he giving us another thing to... Another task? leave us. I would have a private audience with the Fatebinder. Ascend and join me. You will find the way opened. Okay. Oh boy. Alright. Uh, should we, can we talk to the Fate Binders here? Fatebinder Kelio. Zathias, I see you've returned to the fold. Your exploits in Vindrian's well are a matter of some discussion. The Fate Binder of Balance regards you with a discerning eye, and for a moment you feel as if she is trying to peer into the very depths of your mind. What can I do for you? She touches a dental hand to your shoulder. Uh, does anything happen while I was away? There have been whispers that Karen grew disloyal to Graven Ash's command during the campaign in Azure. I took up the mantle of investigation near Plains Gate and judging the rumors to be true, dispatched Karen by proclaiming Kairos' Edict of Stone. The very earth turned against the traitorous Archon as the region split us under in righteous judgment. That's happened now? Have you occupied your time in the Bastard City? Tidon sends me on assignments here and there. I settle disputes between the locals and the Adjudicator is otherwise... When the Adjudicator is otherwise occupied. She smirks. <clears throat> Everything from trade disagreements to pushing chorus squatters out of basements. <laughs> Real rewarding work. Woof. She waves it off. The glory of war is not an honor reserved for the likes of us. We're the fish swimming in Tunan's wake, picking up scraps along the way. Rather large and imposing compared to the bottom feeders of the tiers, but fish all the same. Interesting. Um, we don't need to know more about Tune On, at least not from them, because we should know this thing. We're not going to accuse her of spying. We're not going to tell her about concerns about the war, because it seems that we have a distrust of this fate binder. Alright, so the balance, Fatebinder of Balance. This is Fatebinder Rogalis. Fatebinder, you return. Rogalis looks you up and down with an inscrutable expression. You look as if you have questions for me to untangle. Ask, I am feeling generous. Uh. Okay, why are we bringing this up? Um. Maybe so some of the past Archons. Much that was known has been lost regarding the first Archon of Frost, but his talents were improved upon by three following Archons, sisters born together and never since, uh, never since seen apart. It is said Rana, Nirabel, and Slayer were so cold at birth that they were thought stillborn. Okay, where did you study when you were younger? An award of the court for as long as I've been aware. As a child, I demonstrated holy, perfect recall, and I absorbed all that Tunon and my tutors had to offer. I remember hating all the lectures and wishing I could learn at my pace. Funny how I envied the sages of the tears, how they could spend their whole lives reading and never exhaust their library. Of course, now the Valum Citadel is nothing more than a burning waste. All right, we'll talk about the sages. I will not speak of the sages. They are no better than charlatans and cons. Wholly selfish in their ill pursuit to hoard all knowledge from others. 
They are self-blinded by their own deceptions and clever manipulations. They alone caused their own undoing and are solely to blame for the burning library, one of the most grievous of wrongs in the known histories for which they can never be forgiven. Alright, well, you know about the other fate finders. You'll need to be more specific than that, I'm afraid. There is, on last count, slightly more than a handful of us. Alright, fate finder of balance. Calio is the finest among us. Her discernment is beyond reproach, and she's perhaps Tudon's favorite. She has a mind for suspicion and observation that makes others uneasy. We who operate within the confines of the law have nothing to fear, of course. What about the fate finder of war? Nunaval's keen, brash, and a hearty braggart with a fondness for bloodshed. He can not He can be utterly unbearable at times. His justice is fair, even if he skews towards rather exacting and uncompromising punishments at times. What about me? I have pondered your impulsive nature. It vexes me constantly. Your support of the Scarlet Chorus only affirms my belief that you are among the more severe and unpredictable members of our office. Alright, I don't think of anything else we can talk about. So he's just a... He doesn't have a title. Fatebinder title. We have balance, and I'm assuming you're Fatebinder of War. Ah, Zathios, you return, unscathed and more acclaimed than ever. It seems to be your way. The Fatebinder of War claps you good-naturedly and with excessive strength on the back. Come, you must regale, regale me with all that, that your journey has held. I could use a moment of respite between friends. Regards you with a warm, boisterous smile. Speak as you wish. I'd pay a boar's weight in rings to know your thoughts. He rakes a hand through his thick red beard and offers you a grin. Come, let us speak freely. I've claimed the spire at Vindrian's well. So the court's whispers are true. The fate binder rubs his fingers along the underside of his chin, pondering his thoughts with great weight. After a moment, he offers you a wistful sort of smile. Someday, I would like to witness for myself this tower that has risen above the realm like a blade thrust into the sky. Yeah, we're using it out to become a fate binder. I cannot speak for the other fate binders, but I joined the court when I was yet still a boy and impetuous beyond reason. I've been imprisoned with a death sentence for the crime of desecrating corpses. Oh. He laughs hard and hearty. It was nothing so exciting that you're no doubt imagining. I was merely burning corpses that awaited burial. Before the local authority could see me to the gallows, the judiciary claimed me a great talent waiting to be realized, needing only to be steered. Uh, so why burn? Corpse piling in the streets, spreading plague faster than the filthiest of rats. It was but ten and a weak fighter. I did what I could for my homeland. Why was it a crime? There was a time when even the Northmen were... This is of superstitious stock. A time before Kairos brought reason to the realms, the people of my city believed that, without proper rights, it was cheating our fallen warriors from returning to the land. And it's a good thing to have unspared you. As I have said, the adjudicator saw within me something of rare value. It is true for us all. You as well were chosen for our great court, for which I am grateful. As a fate binder of war, I rely heavily on your talents. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about masks or... History and origin. What about Kairos' armies, past victories, war, recent events? Let's say farewell. We talk to them enough. Alright, so we gotta go up, right? Nope. Oh, careful when you bump into them, they'll fall to their deaths. Oh, he's got his, like, big bad imposing throne room up here. Alright, I'm gonna just... Nope, I gotta talk to you. This civil war, this feud, is an insult to Kairos' peace. It should not have taken the better part of a year to silence the last vestiges of the Oathbreakers. Tune in regard to a thoughtful silence. Um, we could say I agree, Your Honor, we could say nothing. Uh, definitely... We definitely agree. I don't know what the proper... Etiquette is. I mean, we could call him your honor, and or we could say nothing. He'll probably just be, you know, why is your tongue silent? Blah 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 blah. We can say I agree. Our allies squabble while our enemies regroup. 
It falls upon the court to measure the extent of the damage and to execute the agents of disorder. I suspect that treachery, negligence, disunity, and greed have infected one or both of our esteemed allies. Until you are instructed otherwise, this matter is the court's primary focus. Primary focus, okay. Graven Ash and the voices of Nerat must be examined in close detail. You are charged with observing the Archons and presenting your case that one of them has wrought chaos and disorder upon the tears. Um, so if we're a kind of lawyer slash detective <laughs> in these things, um, asking these kind of questions, could we, what if I find them both blameless or could they both be guilty? These are like useless questions because there's no facts to behind it. So I just think that we'll just make this our mission. As always, you will be held accountable for what you do in the court's name. But you are free to conduct your investigation in the manner of your choosing. You must expect lies, misdirection, and manipulation. Suffer not such obstructions of justice. I like the way that's worded. Suffer not such obstructions of justice. They say the voices of Nerat holds you in higher regard than most. Use this alliance to enter his confidence. It seems unlikely the Archon of Secrets is more honest with friends than with rivals, but to his friends, he has been known to divulge much. The disfavored will likely be less cooperative with your investigation. They will no doubt assume Graven Ash's honor is beyond reproach, which is all the more reason to scrutinize the Archon of War closely. And if the ironclad forces discourage your inquiry, I charge you to make them talk. Speak their language of battle if you must. Alright. Uh, we're not gonna say that extracting information sounds like a worthy challenge. Of course, seems like a source of lies why bother. We're not gonna do that either. I shall speak with the Archon of Secrets. Your fellow Fatebinders have been busy acting as my eyes and ears. I have a few leads for you to follow. You should, of course, speak with your brothers and sisters of the court if you need further counsel. Okay. The disfavored have made use of the sages' network of dovecoats and messenger birds as they come under capture. I've heard multiple claims of strategic communications gone missing. The sages are broken, their citadel in flames, but they were not slaughtered to the last. Some of their numbers still congregate around the smoking husk of their burning library. If they have been reading disfavored communications, learn what they learned, then execute them. There is a final matter to discuss. A sensitive topic. Though it's impossible to gauge from his expression, Yunan seems more wary than usual. What concerns the court? In spite of the many shortcomings at Vendrian's well, you managed to make a name for yourself. You proclaimed an Edict of Kairos, resolved its demanding conditions, and ascended the mountain spire. Any one of these feats would be worthy of recognition by the highest authority. You managed to accomplish three. Tunan hovers in observance, awaiting a response. He's like, just another day in the life of the Fatebinder. I was only doing my job, Your Honor. I'm in a privileged position to accomplish incredible deeds. I'll say that. It pleases me that you grasp your role, as long as you temper it with a sense of duty. Whether by design or by accident, you have captured the attention of Kairos's army and the local tearsmen alike. This is no small opportunity and the court charges you with exploiting your new standing to its fullest potential. You have a title in our hierarchy. However, it's a little-known secret that one's standing in the world is determined by their infamy, their deeds, and how they come to be known. Mind this notion as you bring justice to this lawless frontier. There may come a time when your deeds speak for you louder than any title. If your killing spree in the bastard city is any indication, you are no stranger to spreading infamy already. 
Turn on nods and approval. Whatever you did to capture the attention of the masses at Vendrine's well, I would encourage you to do so again. Okay, so understood, I'll be known as my champion as a champion of justice. Look forward to chaining chaos to my will. Great deeds will define me. I think I just say understood. Champion of justice. Good. It falls to us to set a new standard for these southern barbarians. You are dismissed. Oof. Should the court have need of your presence, you will receive word. Go forth and do my bidding, and bring glory and honor to the tears in Kairos' name. Tunan wraps his gavel against the floor, the singular note resounding through the hall. Alright, this way he leaves off. The ornament atop this throne resembles Tunan's mask. It always seems to meet your gaze, regardless of where you are standing. Hmm. Creepy. No, oh, no, he's back up here. Okay, so we got some stuff to do. Look at the level up. Alright, Barrack. Hmm. Action. So we got 15 vitality right now. Dean might. Let's up might. And so we probably need more talent points in this tier. Uh, bear comes at Timmy's voice. Have the resolve reduced. That's be good to have. So the dissonance of war. We got to go to Cacophony and speak to the voice of Nurant. All uncovered evidence will be listed here between those two. During visions, the weight of ages. Bear requested that you petition Tunon, or ooh, speak with Tunon in his court. Alright, so before we leave, that's going to be something that we do next time. So, till next time, this has been Zithios, signing out for now. Bye, folks.